Homo erectus, or as they're known, the upright man, this extinct human species holds a unique spot in our evolutionary history, and their story takes us across continents and hundreds of thousands of years. So, what do we know about these ancient hunter-gatherers? Well, for starters, Homo erectus was remarkably adaptable. Their fossils have been discovered all over, from Africa to Southeast Asia, which tells us they were true pioneers, exploring and surviving in wildly different environments. The first known remains of Homo erectus date back nearly 1.9 million years, with some evidence showing they might have survived well into the middle Pleistocene. But with such a huge time span and a lot of fossil variety, experts often debate whether they really were one single species or if we're looking at several related groups. Now, how did we first come across Homo erectus? Back in the 1890s, a guy named Eugène Dubois found fossils on Java in Indonesia, and he named them Pithecanthropus, which we now recognize as Homo erectus. Since then, fossils have popped up in Indonesia, China, and eventually Africa in the 1960s. Most researchers think they probably evolved from an earlier species like Homo habilis in East Africa or possibly Eurasia. And some believe that from this broad group, later species emerged, like Homo heidelbergensis, which is linked directly to us, Homo sapiens. But here's the kicker. The fossils we've found show tons of variation. They come from different times, places, and even climates. So the big question is, are we looking at one unified species, or is it a bunch of separate species that evolved in similar ways? Some scientists support a single species model, which means they think all these fossils represent one adaptable species, despite the differences. This broad view, known as Homo erectus sensu lato, meaning, in the broad sense, suggests they adapted to different environments and climates over time and distance, leading to the range of physical traits we see. Others, however, argue for a stricter definition. They think African fossils, especially those from Kolbifora, are so unique that they could belong to a separate species altogether, something we call Homo ergaster. This would mean Homo ergaster might be the direct ancestor of humans, while Homo erectus in Asia might represent a different branch, one that didn't lead to modern humans. So, the debate is still ongoing, and we may not have all the answers yet. For now though, the idea of a single species still holds, but with a warning. Just because Homo erectus may have had a lot of variety, we shouldn't use them as a catch-all for fossils that don't fit anywhere else. As far as where Homo erectus roamed, the spread is pretty incredible. Fossils have turned up everywhere from Southeast Asia, like Java and China, to Georgia and Eurasia, and throughout Africa, like at Olduvai Gorge and in Kenya's Turkana Basin. They even made it to parts of Europe, although those fossils are now thought to belong more to Homo heidelbergensis. Homo erectus is believed to have started their great migration from Africa, moving through the Middle East and reaching East Asia between 1.8 to 1.7 million years ago. What pushed them onward? According to a study in 2016, they may have followed herds of large herbivores, staying close to flint deposits for tools and avoiding areas crowded with big predators. Interestingly, they showed up almost simultaneously in East Africa and Eurasia, hinting that they might have even originated in Eurasia, which could explain the later emergence of Homo floresiensis, a small, erectus-like species, in Indonesia. Either way, it's clear they had an impressive range, spreading quickly and adapting to whatever challenges they faced. And Homo erectus was definitely bigger and had a more modern build compared to earlier humans. Their skeletons were pretty similar to ours but more solid, giving them a stockier look. They were the first humans with body proportions close to modern humans, long legs, a balanced torso, which made them great walkers and helped them spread across vast distances on two feet. Unlike their earlier, more tree-climbing ancestors, Homo erectus had fully adapted to life on the ground. In Africa, some of them were even quite tall, around 170 centimeters on average, though across their range, 
They varied a lot in size, standing anywhere from around 145 centimeters to 185 centimeters and weighing between 40 to 68 kilograms. That's definitely taller than early humans like the famous Australopithecus lucy, who was only about 110 centimeters. They also had a serious brain upgrade compared to previous species. While early Homo erectus started off with brain sizes around 600 to 800 cubic centimeter, later members had cranial capacities of over 1,000 cubic centimeter, which falls close to the lower end of our own species. Their skulls were different from ours, with heavy brow ridges and a sloping head shape. And speaking of diet, Homo erectus needed plenty of energy to keep up with those bigger brains and bodies. They hunted and gathered to survive, probably eating a wide variety of foods, including plants like tubers, and definitely a good amount of meat. We know they had access to animal carcasses, possibly both scavenged and hunted, because of cut marks on bones found with their remains, going back at least 1.75 million years. What's more, it looks like they may have been among the first humans to use fire, which was a total game-changer. Evidence of early fire use dates back to about 1.8 million years ago, and by around 500,000 years ago, cooking food over a fire had probably become more common. By 400,000 years ago, species within the Homo erectus era were actively using fire, which wasn't just about food, it gave them warmth, kept predators at bay, and even provided a social hub. Imagine groups of Homo erectus gathered around a fire inside a cave or under a cliff overhang. Fire transformed their way of life and likely brought them closer together. On top of that, Homo erectus were skilled toolmakers. They started with basic Old Dawan tools but are especially known for creating more advanced tools in what's called the Akulian stone tool industry. These included the very first hand axes, which were a big step up in stone tool technology. With a variety of tools at their disposal, they could handle a wide range of environments as they moved across continents. When it comes to how they interacted socially, it's hard to say for sure if they had any kind of language. There's no clear evidence to prove or disprove whether they could communicate in a structured way, but there must have been some level of social structure. Language might have been more limited or even non-existent in the way we know it, and without genetic material, we can't check for the FOX2 gene. That later appeared in Neanderthals and Denisovan, and is linked to language ability in modern humans. Overall, Homo erectus shows us some of the earliest signs of human-like behaviors and adaptations, marking a major step in our evolutionary journey.